please open your essential elements packets to number 33, Song for Christine. So remember, we are going to go through four steps now when we look at a piece of music. We're looking for the skips and steps, we're saying note names, and then we are going to play it twice. Now, remember that Song for Christine is two lines long. So when you get to the end of the first line, your eyes have to jump, just like when you're reading sentences in a book, your eyes have to quickly jump to the beginning of the next line, and sometimes that can be tricky. So I always tell my students, just like if you're reading out loud, Try to always be looking a word or two ahead. So in music, always try to look a note or two ahead so that things don't catch you off guard. It's a really good trick. So first time through, we're just looking for skips and steps. Remember that we already learned the second line, which has a bunch of the skips. So we already see, if you look at the second line of Song for Christine, we see that D, F sharp, A that we already practiced five times. Great. So let's really just look at the first line now for skips or steps. Going from the beginning, we're starting on the note D, which is your high D. Goes down the scale, goes down the scale, and look, we jump from F sharp to D in the third measure. That's the only other skip we have that we haven't already practiced, so that's nice and easy. Just make sure that you're looking ahead for it when we get there. Let's go ahead and say our note names, keeping a steady pulse. Remember, we're going to do the first and second lines. One, two, ready, go. D, D, C sharp, C sharp. B, B, A, rest. G, G, F sharp, D. E, 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 rest. D, F sharp, A, A. B, B, A, rest. G, G, A, A, D, 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 rest. Let's try playing it. So find your, find your high D first, especially my bass. Make sure that you find this note before we start playing. Remember the note D on your A string or the G string for bass is a ringing tone. So when it's perfectly in tune, your instrument is more resonant. It makes more vibrations and sounds bigger and louder. So let's see if we can find the first note D before we start. Listen to it vibrate and ring. Okay, and then especially violin viola, snuggle up that second finger right behind it with nice tall fingers, straight EWP line. So here we go, number 33 song for Christine. One, two, ready, play. in the um, a little bit earlier in this video feel free please to use your fourth finger violins and violas on that A in the second to last measure it's entirely optional but especially if um, you feel like you're a more advanced player that's a really good way to challenge yourself just a little bit in this exercise or this song um, there's one thing that that tends to give students a little bit of trouble in this and we're gonna go over it so going from the note A open A the note G on your D string can be challenging on violin, viola, and cello. It's not so bad on the bass because you stay on one string, but for violin, viola, and cello, it's a little tricky. So the tricky part is when we go from A to G, we all of a sudden have to put all of our fingers, we have to plop them down. So let's try to do that a few times, okay? Just to practice plopping down, and again, we're listening. G is another ringing tone, so we're listening to make sure that it's ringing, and that's how we know if we're playing it in tune. So let's go from the note A. We're gonna do A, rest, and during the rest, we're gonna plop our fingers down and then we'll play G. Here we go, ready, and A, plop, G. Let's do it again, ready, go. A, plop, G. You should even hear your fingers fall on the string. Two more times, ready, and A, plop, G. And make 
make sure your bow also gets there. Last time, ready? And clap, shoot. So you're gonna be doing that in two separate places in song for students. See if you can find them. Take a peek in your music. See if you can find those two spots. Where do you go from an A, rest, G? Do you see at the end of the second measure into the third measure? And then right below it in measure uh, six and seven, the same exact thing happens. So that's a really good thing to isolate and practice on its own. Once you feel good about that, um, you can go ahead and play it through again. And then if you're, you've already done that, we can move on to our next piece, Natalie's Rose. And you're going to practice in, in the same exact way. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them together because I think you know now how to practice them. So remember, you're going to do, uh, look for the skips and steps. If it's helpful for you, you can even circle where they happen lightly in pencil in your music, the, the skips. Um, the one thing I ask you, please not to write in our note names and finger numbers because then we start to read note names and finger numbers instead of the actual pitches. So even if you did that in elementary school, that's kind of like a crutch. So just make sure that you don't continue doing that. Um, now that you're in fifth grade. Once you've done 34, you can open your actual books to page 15. And if you want to pause the video and do that, once you're on page 15, you'll see we have a few more actual songs that have notes D through D, quarter notes with rests. Um, when they wrote this book, they assume that you're not using your bow yet, but we already knew, know how to use our bow. So please do use your bow, even though we don't see any down bow or up bow symbols, but please use your bow. You can practice all of the songs on page 15. So you would do number 43, 44, and 45. You don't need to do 46. So that's your practicing assignment for um, this cycle. I will tell you if it's taking you a long time to get through everything, please don't feel like you need to do all five of those pieces in one day. It's kind of a lot. So you can do two or three in one day and the next day make sure you do the other ones and then you can kind of rotate through that way. Okay, happy practicing.